folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape, introducing what in my opinion is one of our cooler shoots. We are in Buzzards Bay here on Cape Cod, early October, catching and targeting weak fish. And this feels like a decent one I have on the line here and just super cool. This is making my season right here. It's a decent fish, a very soft mouth. So I'm gonna hold my breath as I swing them in. Whew, here we go. And this is awesome. Heck of the way to wrap up the season. Despite this being a rare event with a large school of weak fish rolling through Buzzards Bay, our approach is the same as any other situation we might encounter, a school of fish we're targeting. The fish theory is still the same. And so what's going on here is there's a school of weak fish sort of roving around under the topwater bluefish and stripers. Now, we've learned that they're eating sand eels and so we sort of geared everything to look like sand eels. And so what we're doing now, the technical approach, is just idling along, working the perimeters of these birds using both the fish finder and the side scan, uh, the down scope versus the side scan, to locate the fish. Once we find them, we're gonna stop, drop, and jig. We're at 42 feet of water, sending this down to the bottom and vertically jigging this lure. Now this is a surface eraser, but today we're gonna to call it the bottom eraser. And this lure can pretty much do anything you tell it to do, which is why I love it so much. And so the, the weak fish today are keyed in on sand eels. So we've got two colors. We've got a sand eel color and a traditional pink bubblegum color, sort of a match the hatch. And we're just sending these jigs down and twitch jigging them and they're hopping all over them. And uh, so we've matched the hatch. These baits are keel weighted, so when you jig it, they're gonna have a nice little twitter or a flutter. Almost looks like a vertical soft bait in a way, but you know, there's a mix of sizes. This is a little guy, you can see it just coughed up some bait and spit the hook, but it's really that easy. I'm gonna see if I can seal the deal on round two, but I'm gonna send the jig rate right back down, the surface eraser, nope, the bottom eraser today. It's gonna set it down. And now I'm on the bottom, just a little twitch jig, making it dance, let a pause. Still over the fish on the fish finder. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Rise, fall. Oh, missed that one. And most of the hits have been coming on the fall. And so as I drop it, I've just missed two hits. I'm gonna pay out a little line. We're drifting the wind and tide together. That's 40 feet in this buzzer's bay. We're not drifting super quick. It's gonna twitch, drop. And when they hit it on the fall, you gotta be quick. Remember, as this little jig is dropping, it's doing a nice little dart and dance. So here we are, hooked up again. This one's a little bigger than the last one. So if I'm gonna lose a fish, I'd rather lose the last one. Eh, he's about the same size, but we're gonna get this guy in the boat nice and quick. And here we are jigging topwater lures for weak fish. <laughs> what a day. Talk about an uh, interesting way to close the season. Um, I want these fish to keep coming back to these waters, so we're letting them all go, and there we are. So we just went over some good marks on the fish finder, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the boat in reverse to check the boat, so to stop that forward momentum. So now when I drop, I'm gonna be straight down. And uh, so I'm gonna send this jig down. It's really important to check the boat with these lighter lures. We're reaching its maximum range at 0.8 ounces in a lot of plastic. So I'm just sending that straight down and I'm marking fish on the bottom. And um, all, all, all over. Um, so I'm gonna send it down. We're gonna start with jig retrieve number one, which is the twitchy retrieve. So I'm just down there. See what I'm doing? I'm just twitching the rod. The bait's just like in one spot, just twitching. Remember, this is mostly plastic with just a little bit of 
weight of lead in the tail end. And so that bait is quivering or dancing, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just twitching it, twitching it, twitching it, twitching it, twitching it, twitching it. And so I'm hanging one, one zone and you know, natural color. I'm in right around the marking, in right around the bait. At some point, a weak fish will just get annoyed and have to eat it. So that's jig retrieve number one. Now, number two is what I'm gonna call more of a slow style jigging. I'm gonna repoint and put it back down on the bottom because we're drifting. I'm just gonna keep it slow and the, the lure is just sort of drifting with the boat. I'm gonna lift the tip up. Now, I'm gonna like not just drop it super quick. I'm having a little bit of pressure or I'm just keeping up with the drift as I drop. A slow tip raise, moving it up. I'm picturing three or four feet in the water column. And then I'm taking a very measured drop, keeping tension. Because these fish have been often hitting it on the drop. And it's the most subtle hits I'm finding. And so if I feel the least, the least amount of disturbance on the drop, I'm going to be quick to set the hook. But you don't want to set the hook too much because these mouths are super soft on the weak fish. Now the third jig is, um, I'm gonna call it more of a fast style retrieve. I'm putting it on the bottom and I'm just reeling it up towards the surface and it's just gonna scooch up to the, uh, to the surface. And the advantage there is you're covering all levels of the water column where the two more stylized jigs, uh, the twitchy retrieve and that slow pitch style retrieve, you're putting the jig right where you're marking fish and keeping it, you're staying within that three or four foot range. Then again, this fast reel through the water column, jig number three, you're covering some ground. It's funny, you don't know the size of these for the first third of the fight. This guy's a little guy, but they all have started feeling small. And uh, it's funny, they, uh, it's like a, it might be a lot of redfish in the way they fight. And uh, this is a little guy, I'm just gonna do a quick release keep them in the water. These are not that common. Well, that's the best release, right? One where you don't have to touch the fish. So I'm gonna drop that jig right back down and hopefully get another one. Right, so these are a rare fish for this area. So I really want to do a good job getting this back in the water quick, quickly and do a good job reviving it. We landed these pretty quick, so I'm not too worried about it. I don't know much about these. So I'm just gonna assist it. If it, see, it wants to swim out of my hand. I'm gonna call that a healthy release. Let's just take a minute to deep dive on the lures we're using today. Now, it's a little unusual. We're using a topwater plug as a vertical jig. But let's just start with size and shape and profile. So you'll see that these are the sand eels that the weak fish were coughing up. They're pretty actually sizable sand eels for this time of year in Buzzards Bay. And, but you'll see how close in size and profile and shape these are. And so it's a perfect, perfect match the hatch type situation. Certainly the bubble gum's an attractor color. Now these lures are keel weighted. You know, they're designed for very long casts, you know, because the plug will turn and go long distances, which is also going to have the same effect dropping. And so they're aft weighted, so they're going to get down to the bottom in a relatively efficient manner. We were fishing between 40 and we'll say 45 feet of water. I feel like we we're sort of maxing the range that you would get with depth with these lures. They weigh 0.8 ounces, um, but we were getting there. And uh, so the cool thing is, um, you know, once we're on the bottom, these plugs, you can jig a number of different ways. We can twitch jig them, we can slow pitch them, and then we also can just, you know, I'm going to call it fast jigging where you're reeling them up, up and down throughout the water column. Now they're also belly weighted, so they're bottom heavy. And so if you're jigging them or working them, they're going to have a very natural undulation. So if you were to twitch and reel these in, in a casting scenario, you're going to get the same exact action, but vertically up and down. So which makes them super fishy. And needless to say, they're very effective today. Yes, they're surface plugs, they're called surface erasers, but today we unofficially dub these bottom erasers because they made a very excellent vertical jig, and which was handy today because we came out with surface in mind, topwater action for bass and albies, 
and you know that's what you would expect in early October. We found the birds, found the life. We noticed that it was hard getting topwater hits. We looked at the fish finder; it was just stacked with nice marks. So we just sent it down, and we were pleasantly surprised at how well these jigs, these plugs, I should say, uh, vertically fished. And what's nice about this design is it's mostly plastic and so it's a big profile you know if this was all metal or all lead uh, these would be super heavy and weigh much more than the point ounce point eight ounce that these each weigh so if you can get to bottom you can impart maximal amount of action which is what these fish require they're pretty finicky but once you got your jig dialed in they were they, they were super effective and you know in the versatility of the way you could fish them uh, came into play because in the when the tide was going strong the twitchy jig was working great for us but when it died off um, a slow pitch a more subtle jig retrieve was what was cracking the code so one lure unlimited options and and uh, certainly it was a clutch clutch hitter today so i'm just going to take a moment to get a photo of this fish so we can upload it to the Got One app. It was around this time of year, last year in Woods Hole, I got a weak fish. So I can't wait to make both entries because it goes back in time. I'm gonna upload last year's shot. This year is certainly the catalog, but what I'm wondering out loud is, is this a pattern that I'm not aware of, a weak fish pattern uh, around this time of year where they move through Buzzards Bay? Certainly this time next year, you bet, I'm gonna be back at this same place and same time to see if I can get more. So the outfits we're using today pretty much follow Hoagie's Fish Smart Fish Simple system. Now, we came out today with bass and albies in mind. And so we have our typical uh, seven foot outfits. These are St. Croix rods, Dioweb, Saltus, 4,000 reels, uh, 30 pound test braid, 15 pound test floral leader, and our surface erasers. And uh, again, we were coming out in mind for topwater stripers. And um, so these are just very typical and short outfits. So the takeaway is you want to be ready for everything, particularly during the fall run, because you never know what's going to happen. We came hoping for bass and albies, found these guys, had our surface lures ready to go, but the lures work for jigging. Rather than retie, mash the hatch, here we are. We had a great day. Um, yes, rare event with weak fish here in Buzzards Bay, but the theory of jigging, light tackle jigging for these guys holding on the bottom is just the same whether you're fishing striped bass or tuna or weak fish. So I'm gonna unhook this guy and head back to the barn.